We are now go going to see um, what is the relationship between the determinant and systems of linear equations. Let's assume that Ax equals to b is a system of linear equations with A a square matrix, which means that um, this system of linear equations has the same number of unknowns uh, as the number of equations. Then, the first part of the theorem states that this system admits a unique solution if and only if the determinant of A is non-zero. So according to uh, part A, in order to uh, show that um, a system has a unique solution, um, we need to check that the determinant of the associated matrix A is non-zero. Uh, as we will see, the determinant of A different uh, from zero is uh, equivalent to the fact that A is invertible, and therefore, using this fact, we can immediately prove the part A from the RC theorem that we have seen in previous lectures. And for the first time, we do have uh, an algorithm computing the actual solution of the system of linear equations, um, which we have not had in the previous theorem, uh, previous RC theorem about uh, systems of linear equations. Uh, the dimension of the space of solutions of the system and the fact that that um, set of uh, solution uh, set of solutions was uh, an hyperplane in some euclidean space and in this case we can actually uh, use an algorithm the following one to compute the sing the individual uh, coefficients of the unique solution that is stated in the part a so uh, in that case, which means if the determinant of A is different from zero, the unique solution is such that uh, the individual coefficients are computed as a ratio between two determinant uh, of matrices. Uh, the first one, the first matrix at the numerator is the same matrix as A, except that you replace the ith column by the uh, B vector, B column vector. We get still a square matrix, n by n matrix, and uh, the determinant of this matrix is what appears here, here in the numerator. In the denominator of the fraction, we have the determinant of A. And of course, we see that uh, this expression makes sense just in case the determinant of A is non zero, as assumed at the beginning of uh, part B. Let's see now an example uh, and uh, an application of this theorem. Consider the following system of linear equations given by uh, the first equation uh, 2x plus z minus 2 equals to 0, minus y minus 3z plus 2 equals to 0, and minus x plus y minus z equals 0. Let's see if we can apply the theorem that we just stated and first verify whether it has a unique solution or not and if it has a unique solution then apply the algorithm uh, whose expression is up here in this screen and compute the solution. So um, the theorem, the part A of the theorem stated that uh, a system of linear equation has a unique solution if and only if the determinant of A is non-zero. So let's compute the determinant of A first writing A. So the matrix A is the matrix of the coefficient of this system, and the coefficients of the unknowns, which are, we see that here there is a non x, and then there is an unknown z, so at first we cannot really say here how many nodes there are from the first equation, but the second equation there is also a y, and then z, and then x, y, z. Therefore, the, the three unknowns, assuming that there are no, no, no other unknowns, 
the registry of them, so they are x, y, and z. Therefore, in the first equation, the coefficients are 2 for the, uh, for the known x, and then 0 for the known y, because there is no y appearing, and then 1 for the known z. Therefore, the first row is 2, 0, 1, as written here. Second row, there is no x, hence the coefficient of x must be 0, and there is negative y, so minus 1, and then negative 3z, so negative 3 here. And as for the last equation, we have a negative 1, a 1, and a negative 1. What about the constant term? Constant term, uh, in the expression of the on, on which we use theorems for uh, systems of linear equations, we have to write the constant term in the in the right hand side of the uh, matrix equation. Hence, here this negative two has to be uh, moved uh, right bound here on the right hand side. Uh, thus it becomes uh, 2. So the first coefficient of b will be 2. This plus 2, when moved the right side of the equation, it becomes a negative 2. And then the last equation has no uh, constant term. Therefore, the last coefficient of b will be 0. Now the determinant of a, by definition, is what? Well, we are expanding here a along the first row hence we have two times the determinant of this two by two matrix so two times the determinant of the matrix neg negative one negative three one negative one plus so it, it should be neg minus zero times the determinant of a submatrix but surely it will be zero that summoned so the, the last summand is plus 1 times the determinant of this submatrix. So plus 1 times is just the determinant of the submatrix. Expanding the expression, we get 2 times 1 plus 3, which is 4, plus negative 1. So we have 2 times 4, 8, minus 1, 7. 7 is different from 0, hence uh, the theorem implies that uh, there exists a unique solution of the system of linear equations. Now let's find what the solution is. By the previous theorem we can express the solution as c with coefficients uh, c1, c2 and c3, where each of the ci's is expressible in terms of the determinant of a certain matrix the, the expression on the right hand side involves a fraction and the numerator is the determinant of a modified matrix from A and the denominator is al was always, if you remember, the determinant of A. We already computed the step before to establish whether the, uh, the system of linear equations had a unique solution or not. So we can just write the denominator of each expression 7 the numerator will have to compute at each step. For C1, the numerator is the determinant of. We take the matrix A and we replace the ith column by the, of A by the constant term B. Now, for C1, the ith column is the first because I is the index of C. In this case is C as index 1, thus we have to replace the first column with the vector B. The first column of A would be 2, 0, negative 1, we replace it with 2, negative 2, 0. Here we have 2, negative 2, 0 as the first column, so the vector B, and then second and third columns, they will be just the ones of A. So 0, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 3, negative 1. What's the, the, the determinant of this expression? 
Well, okay, so we have to multiply everything by 1, 7 because we are dividing by 7 here. And here we are expanding it through, again, through the first row, along the first row. So it's 2 times the determinant of this submatrix minus 0 times the determinant of whatever is 0 plus 1 times the, the, the determinant of this submatrix that is just the determinant of this submatrix. So expanding it, it turns out to be 6 over 7. So C1 will be 6 over 7. C2, we have to determine, uh, we have to uh, write the correct matrix to compute, whose determinant we want to compute. This time the i, the index i is 2, so we have to replace the second column of A with the vector B. The first column is the same as the one uh, as the one of A, the first column of A, so 2, 0, negative 1. Then second column is B, 2, negative 2, 0. And third column is the one of A again, 1, negative 3, negative 1. We expand and we find out that this is 8 over 7. Last coefficient is C3, i is 3 in this case, and we have to replace the third column of A by B. This is the matrix we have to compute the determinant, and expanding it, finally we get 2 over 7. We have shown that the solution of the system of linear equations is the vector with coefficients 6 over 7, 8 over 7, and 2 over 7. Thank you.